Hello WinCrafts fans. I'd like to do a short video here to announce the release of WinCrafts Pro version 2.6. And I'd like to give a little rundown of some of the new features. Uh, first one is a, I've added a new statistics screen to display the possible bet results of the next roll of the dice. You can find it under the statistics menu. It's called Bet Possibilities. It raises a screen where you can select a player or players. It's got all the combinations of the dice. In this case, they've been uh, compressed into the 21 distinguishable combinations. So, for instance, uh, something like the 4 rolled as a 1-3 is the same as a 3-1. You can't tell which is which, so they're both combined here, and the probability is adjusted accordingly. So it's got all the combinations of the dice, and it looks at the table to see what bets uh, are active and can win or lose on the very next roll. And it shows the possibilities of ones that will win, ones that will lose, combines them into a net, multiplies them times the probability, and then shows the expected value. Now the expected value here is not the same as you might expect to see in a table of house advantages. It's not a percentage. It's actual dollars won or lost. Uh, you can choose which columns to display or not display here using the display menu. Just select them here. And uh, let me give you a little example. For instance, if we take Frankie and we'll take, say, a $5, make a $5 field bet, the field bet is active, so you can see it appears up here. If he rolls a 2, you win 10 bucks. If he rolls a 3 or a 4, you win 5. If he rolls a 5, 6, 7, or 8, you lose $5. 9 or a 10 or 11, you win $5 and a 12 you win 10 bucks. So uh, combine all those into a net win and loss, multiply times the probability, comes up with the expected value so that on average we can see for the next roll of the dice we were going to lose 27.78 cents. Now you can convert that into a uh, percentage if you wanted. You could just take the point, 20, 0.2778 divided by 5 you're going to, for the double payoffs for 2 and 12, you're going to come up with 5.56% uh, uh, expected value. Uh, now, something like, uh, well, actually, before we do that, let's just show you here. If I were to make a $1 bet, you can see here it is, 5.56%. Um, okay. Now, if we were to make something like a place 6 bet here, here we have a $6 place 6 bet. Notice it doesn't appear over here because it's on the come out rule. Normally the place bet is off. If you were to call it on, it would appear. But uh, it doesn't appear in here until it's active. So let's roll, say, a 4. Now the place 6 bet is active, and now you can see it appears here. So the possibilities are to roll a 6 and win $7, or roll a 7 and lose $6. So multiply all that stuff out. It comes up with a uh, expected loss of... Uh, 2.78 cents per resolution, in this case per roll. And of course, again, you could take this divided by the dollar amount and come up with a 0.463% loss per roll. You can multiply that times 36 elevenths and come up with a 1.51% uh, loss per decision. Now, something like uh, a pass line bet is not going to show what you might expect. Uh, if we make a $1 pass line bet here, this does not show the life of the wager right now. It's not showing the expected value for the full life of the wager. It's only showing that if, it's, if it were to resolve on the next roll, here's what it would be. And that is it could lose on a 2 or a 3, it could win on a 7 or 11, and it could lose on a 12. Assuming that it were to win or lose on the next roll, you would expect to, on average to win 11.11 cents. So the player has the advantage on the come out roll. Now once a point is established, let's roll another four. Now you can see everything here has changed. Now if we roll a four we win, we roll a seven we lose. And now, assuming that a point has been established on the four, we would expect to lose 8.33 cents on average. Now if you wanted to go through all the different points and, and see what all those are, uh, combine it with the come out rule, you eventually would get to the expectation for the pass line of uh, minus 1.41%. So I think you get the idea on that one. Now uh, the next thing is we've added four new prop bets, the hot roller and the left, center, and right field. You can see those here in the display. 
Um, here's left, center, and right field. And basically what they are is the field bet chopped into pieces. And there are one roll, one roll bets. So for a left field, if you roll a two, three, or four, you win, it pays four to one. You roll anything else, you lose. Center field, four, nine, or 10, you win, pays two to one, anything else, you lose. Right field, 10, 11, 12, you win, pays four to one, anything else, you lose. Next bet here is the hot roller bet. Uh, hot roller bet pays according to how many point numbers that you've completed. Now when I say point numbers, uh, it's just identifying the numbers that are used as points. You don't have to roll these numbers as points. You just have to roll their specific combinations. So for a four, we would have to roll, to complete a four, we have to roll a one, three, and a two, two. Now we've already rolled a one, three, you can see it right here. So if I roll a two, two now, that will complete the four and a little circle will be placed around it. Okay, so now you can see that. Now for the five, we'd have to roll a one, four, and a two, three. They don't have to be made in any particular order and it doesn't have to be four, uh, five, the six, then the eight, it could be done in any order, it doesn't really matter. So let's say we roll a four, one, and a two, three, that completes the five, it now has a circle. Uh, let's just skip to the eight now, let's roll a six, two, a five, three, and a four, four, that completes the eight. So you can see how that works. Now, how does it pay? Let's look at the, the uh, configuration screen on the payoffs tab. Here's the hot roller bet. If the uh, shooter sevens out and has made no points numbers, has completed no point numbers, I should say, uh, it's a loss. One point number completed is also a loss. Two point numbers completed pays five to one, three pays 10 to one, four pays 20, five pays 20, and all point numbers completed pays 200 to one. And again, those don't have to be made or not made as point numbers. For instance, you can see the point right now is eight. Let's roll a four, six, and a five, five. Four, six, and a five, five. There, you see we just completed the 10, but the 10 was not the point. So I'm just trying to clarify that. All right, um, all these bets you might have noticed um, have reorganized the center bet screen into five separate um, displays. These displays you can go through by pressing these arrow keys at the bottom, and it'll step through all five of them. You can go forward or backwards through the list as you please. And you can also display them all simultaneously in a separate window by pressing the letter W or selecting Display Center Bets here from the Action menu. As you can see, the W is the shortcut key. What it does is it brings them all together up here in a window. And now the arrow keys at the bottom allow you to reorganize them if you want to for some reason. Maybe you only want to look at two of them. You can, let's say I want to move these hot bets all the way over. I could do that. So now I've got uh, the standard screen, the standard center prop bets, and the hot bets right next to each other. Maybe I don't even want to look at the rest of them. I can just do like that. And, and it, now when you can see down here, when I get to the standard display, the next one to the right of that is going to be the hops. So I could just go back and forth. So that's how you can reorganize it as you please. Now, this particular screen, as you can see when I'm sizing it, does not change the size of the prop bets here. In order to do that, you have to resize the table. So you could, um, let's see here, you can call up the little sizing tool and you can make the screen bigger or smaller. And uh, it's not going to change the window here for the prop bets. You're going to have to do that to get what you like out of it. But it'll change the table itself. The only difference here is for the main screen, if you rotate the table, Obviously, the table is going to rotate, but it will not rotate the prop bets in this separate window. Okay, now I've also changed the ability to set the background player uh, color of the player's status boxes. And you can do that either by using the player's menu up here, or you can right click over a status box, select status box color. And the colors are arranged according to uh, position from the stick person. So one left, two left, three left, four left. Right now, Frankie's sitting in the two left position. So if I select two left, I can change his color to something else. Um, and then that color is now going to be displayed on the table if you're displaying your values 
your checks as values. So for instance, let's say he wants to bet some inside place bets. Right now they're starting as checks. If you select display as numbers, now they're going to appear as numbers, but the background for all these numbers is going to match the color of Frankie's status box. So if I come over here to Slick and I have Slick make some bets, his background color will be cyan. So it's just to kind of help you know, decide if you have many bets on the table, which one belongs to which. They may or may not be uh, highly visible depending upon the colors you select and the size of the screen, but it's an attempt to make it a little bit nicer. Uh, I've also changed the status box at the bottom. You know, when it shows lost, it don't really just show the number. I've changed that just to add a minus sign on there. Uh, I've also added an extra large option, so you can select status boxes size you can see now there's also an extra large and I've changed the font sizing sometimes I've seen a few people put some really long player names in here so I've made it so that it'll automatically uh, change the font size to accommodate some longer player names uh, going to the configuration screen I've changed the ability to set what appears in the center or corner of the table Right now we've got a big six, big eight. It's kind of an old traditional table. There are tables I've seen around where you've got the midway bet in the corner or the over under seven bets in the corner. So you can select those as you please. For instance, I'll select the midway. You can see that appears here. If you were to select a midway or over under seven, then uh, let's see, let's choose this one here. Then you can see big six and big eight goes up onto this screen here. If you select nothing to appear in the corner, let's just say no bet, no corner bets, what's going to happen is there's no corner bet, you're still going to have the midway over under seven, but big six, big eight is going to be dropped out. Uh, there's really no need for that bet anyway. It's kind of on its way out. Honestly, I, I, I would never recommend betting it. If you want to bet a six and an eight, you should bet them as place bets. It pays better, and uh, it's really the better, the better way to go. Uh, I've increased the ability to set dice roll colors. For instance, if I come over here to the dice roll file screen, or dice roll, uh, uh, roll your own number pad, uh, select button color. It used to be where you, uh, opposite numbers like the 2 and 12 had to match, as you can see right now they are, but you can change that if you wanted. Or like say the 410 here, I've got separated uh, 10s are appearing in brown. Uh, let's say if 6 and 8, maybe I wanted 8 to appear as a, uh, let's see, let's choose something else, maybe some purple, dark purple, so you can do that. No big deal, but sometimes it's particular numbers you want to look at, and it just helps that it stand out as well. Uh, I've changed the fire bet, uh, obviously moved it to a different part of the uh, prop bets, and I used to have a thing on where you could say the max prop bet payoff, or max prop bet amount was. Uh, what I've done now is I've changed that, so it's just automatic. A fire bet is tied to the max prop bet payoff. Now uh, I've added fixed width versus proportional width font option to the check stack screen. So if we open that, uh, sometimes you can see uh, when you've put things here into the uh, name column that they don't necessarily line up like you want them to. And you can come up here into options, font, and you can set fixed width and then everything is, all of the letters are going to be the same width and you can line things up maybe a little nicer. Uh, maybe you don't want that, you can just go back to the proportional font. I've also added an output menu which combines the print or if you want rather than to print uh, the check stacks, you can put them out to a text file or the clipboard and you can also put them to the text file or clipboard as tab separated values. Now when you might, you might want to use that when say you want to Take whatever you've got on your check stack screen and you want to open it in a spreadsheet program like Excel. Then you do it in a tab separated values so that when you open it up in Excel, uh, it's going to line them up all nicely into separate columns. And uh, you might find that useful. Uh, let's see, we've also added the option to display hot bets both as dice or alphanumerics. That's back on the uh, prop bet screen here. It's no big deal. You can view the dice here, or if you pr click on hop, then you can just appear uh, as, as letters, words, hop, 26, etc. 
I've also added to auto betting a function called string. Of course, there's also the string function str, which converts a value into a string value. But there's also this new command here, string dollar. And you're probably not going to use that, but you know, if you're really into this, you want to do something on, say, the check stack screen, or maybe some output to a printer, and you want to put out multiples of certain certain strings, you can do that here. So what I've done here, here's a little screen that tallies up come out rolls, and it whenever there was a come out roll, it adds up the number of come out rolls. It uh, tallies up what the come out roll was. For instance, if it was a four, it goes into check stack four. Then it runs through a little loop here. And it says, OK, I want the check stack name then to be equal to a string. This string now, there's two components to the string. One is how many uh, repetitions of the string do you want? And the second part is what the string is. So the number of repetitions and, and the string itself. In this case, I want the string to be 100 units times a ratio. And the ratio is going to be the number I'm looking at. So for here, here I've started a loop with check stack 0 is equal to 2. So that comes in the first time. Check stack name number 2 is going to be equal to check stack 2 divided by the number of come out rolls. So that's going to be the percentage of 2s. So I'm going to take 100 times the percentage of 2s. And that's going to give me a value. And that's how many equal signs I'm going to repeat. So it basically is going to draw a little graph. Uh, again, most of you probably not going to use this, but just to show you, you might find some uses for it. So let me do a little demonstration here. Let's open up the check stack screen and let's run this little thing here with the hyperdrive. And you can see what's happening here. Um, here's the numbers 2 through uh, I guess we haven't rolled any 12s yet. There came one. Okay, so we've got numbers 2 through 12. These are all come out rolls. And you can see it's drawing a little graph here as the rolls are occurring. Uh, I, I demonstrated something similar to this um, on an earlier video. So I think you get the idea on that. I've also improved uh, AutoBet error handling and fixed a few minor bugs. That pretty much covers what I want to talk about here. As always, there will be more to come in the future. Uh, Windcraps is continuously updated. Uh, appreciate your watching. I uh, hope you got something out of that. And uh, go ahead and check out version 2.6. I think you might like it. Thanks a lot.